Hello, welcome to Courageous Possess, the art that rocks with a pop. Thank you for tuning in. Today I am sharing a video on domestic violence and the do's and the don'ts, the way it hurts us as a whole. Um, video you're about to watch happened to me on May the 1st of 2019. Me and my 14 year old daughter uh, witnessed a horrendous act of domestic violence that we were involved in. Um, changed our life forever. The video um, is kind of like triggering to me. So I guess we should get to the why. Um, as you can see on my channel, I do a lot of awesome crafts. Um, domestic violence kind of helped me get into the craft world. I was already a crafter before, but I uh, really dove deep into crafting. When I started experiencing domestic violence, which gave me PTSD. So, my way of calming PTSD was to do awesome crafts. Um, so, I guess that's how we got onto this journey. Before uh, you guys watch the video, I guess it would be helpful to give some insight on my channel and why I do what I do. So, I show you all of my art pieces, but I never gave you the story. So the story is, um, I began domestic violence in 2017, and it lasted for a series of years. Um, I guess I am the voice for a lot of victims who don't get a chance to speak out. Um, I'm the voice to show you that things can change, and through domestic violence, I actually felt my purpose. Sometimes God allows you to go through things and you can bring forth change. So many times in domestic violence, uh, people don't have the courage to speak up. They don't have the willpower to keep going. A lot of people give up. A lot of people die. Some people become addicted to drugs, alcohol, and so much more. And here you have a person like me. I don't have any of those issues other than the mental turmoil of trying to uh, recuperate from being exposed to domestic violence. <clears throat> um, excuse me. I had a severe case of domestic violence. It's only by the grace of God that I'm still alive and I'm grateful to still be alive. And I'm grateful to be able to tell my story. But through domestic violence, as I said before, I found my purpose. And my purpose is arts and crafts. Um, I'm really, really good at what I do. And I would like to share my art with the world. Not only would I like to share my art with the world, a domestic violence piece. Um, I used to tell my abuser I would make sure the world knew my story. He wouldn't get away with what he did to me. My abuser is not locked up. He's actually currently in another relationship with another woman abusing her as well. Her situation is probably... I would say if not the same amount of danger, it might be worse because she has the baby piece. Uh, later on in the series, I'll explain my baby pieces. Um, my children did not make it here, and I am grateful that they didn't make it here because if they did make it here, I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys today because I would be dead. So maybe this video um, can help save her life and thousands of other women and children around the world. That's the purpose of uh, my Courageous Pizzazz business. Um, I realized when I was in domestic violence, my children were affected. A lot of times the adults recuperate from domestic violence and they don't see that the children need help as well. So a lot of times the children turn into adults um, who then become abusers or victims as well. So, Courageous Possess um, spotlights the children. Um, I believe that if we get to the children earlier in life, um, and instead of letting them go into adults and relive in trauma, if we can get to them early and combat the trauma and teach them that it wasn't okay and it's not normal, because so, so many times domestic violence is normalized now today, People don't want to talk about it. So that's where my company comes in at. I focus on the kids. I'm living proof that art helps 
um, throughout the domestic violence the art saved me from killing myself from going crazy from killing my abuser um, the list goes on and on and on instead of reacting and responding out in the manner that a lot of people probably say they would I would sit down and do arts and crafts um, a lot of times I would go through episodes of depression um, PTSD episodes you name it I had it and the only thing that I could do was sit down and do crafts I did crafts while I was homeless. I did crafts in a uh, house roof. I went there. A um, whole lot of things. I will get to those things later um, on in the series. But I guess this is my beginning stages of telling my story. You guys have to bear with me because a lot of this is triggering. Again, as I said before. And um, it takes a lot to speak out. And again, my abuse is not in jail. Um, apparently he's still looking for me. I didn't know that. Um, I know that now. He actually knows where I am now. Um, so I figure if I'm going to die, if that's the case, God forbid, then I don't want somebody else to tell my story. I want to be able to tell my story myself. Who else can tell the story better than the way I can tell my own story? So stay tuned, watch this video, and I'll see you guys again after um i'll show you a couple clippings of the things that he did to me again the date was may the 1st 2019 this is two years into domestic violence and this is the day i became homeless
Ma'am, don't do that. Don't go through my things, please. This man has been abusing me for two years. It's, it's something the police should be able to do about this. Yeah. That's, that's destruction of your property. The TV, see if I can smash the TV. You saw him smash it up, right? You saw that, right? Like I'm garbage. This how you treat women, right? I'm sorry you gotta go through that. I would never do that to my wife. I just I gave up my whole place. I'm homeless now. To come here and get this. This is what domestic violence do to women. But you can take it. Don't worry about it. I'll be blessed. God will give me more. This with domestic violence. Baby, don't ever be abused. And you see this coward? He made me give up my place to move in with him for him to beat me and put me out and throw my shit out on the streets. Don't be like that. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in and watching my video. As you can see, domestic violence is very real. It happens every day and it's normalized as if it's okay. Um, that's the reason I'm here. I want to shed a light on domestic violence and why it needs to stop. I'll give you a couple key factors here on I wrote on my paper. Hashtag, they don't stop until you stop them. Hashtag, they don't stop until you stop them. Um, if you know anybody experiencing domestic violence, if you have videos to share, you have insight you want to share, hashtag it. Send it to the hashtag. Uh, let's see how far we can get this um, thing going. Spread the word. Uh, domestic violence education is crucial if we want to combat it and stop it and save lives and families and children. Most abusers were abused their self. A lot of them have horror stories. Um, the cycle continues. The children that are in domestic violence today will grow up in nine times out of ten either uh, become an abuser or become a victim. My goal is to help stop that in any way that I can possibly. The system failed me. Um, so that's why I'm speaking out. And I need help from you guys to... Shed light on such a dark topic that no one seems to want to discuss. I don't mind discussing it because I've lived it every single day of my life. I'm still living it today. Um, my journey is not complete. Um, I have things I struggle with every day. My mental health is still at stake. I get 
depressed. I have flashbacks of the things that have happened to me. Um, my children were affected. I have one child that's still very, very angry. I have another one that's um, uh, in the state of that shit ain't going to happen to me, which is not good. Mind you, I have all girls. Um, so because we experience domestic violence, they have their own takes take on things and I try to get them counseling. They're not ready. Um, they're adults now, so I cannot force them to. The good thing about being a great mother is that I can talk to them. So my children aren't severely affected, but they're still affected. And the reason they aren't severely affected is because I recognize that there was a problem. And I did what uh, most good mothers should do is talk about it. Um, let them know it's not okay. Let them know that they're important. Show them that you're sorry. Me being a good mother actually helped when my kids don't hate me. They understood that it wasn't our fault. Um, another thing. Let's talk about the video. Uh, let's talk about the, the uh, fish tank scene where you see the young man helping him create a fish tank out. That guy had no idea um, what was about to happen. He thought that he was just um, carrying a tank outside for a neighbor. So as you can see, they're very cunning, very convincing. Um, they will lie to get their way. Um, that same guy actually helped me later. He rehomed my turtles for me. Um, my my fourteen year old had those turtles since she was one year old, one years old, and she was fourteen at the time of the incident. Um, so imagine how devastating that was for her. Uh, the incident started because I poured his alcohol down the drain. Let's go back a little further. I had only been in his house for a week. Prior to that, I lived on my own. What he doesn't know, he'll know now from watching this uh, video if he ever watches it, which I don't give two fucks. Um, I'm tired of being silent. Um, I was planning to run away and disappear. He came to my house, which I was living on my own at the time. And um, so I had to come up with a plan B. So I explained to my two children at the time that um, we would go to his house. And one day we would just vanish when he went to work. That day never came. Within a week of being in his house, I wasn't even fully unpacked. Um, you'll hear me say in the video, um, I've been going through this for two years. He convinced me to move to his house, and this is what he does. That's what he did. Um, in his mind, he convinced me to move my children and myself into his home. Um, again, the plan B was for me to vanish one day. He didn't know that. But I didn't know that um, my hell would intensify. Um, so within a week, the video and the footage that you saw is what he did to me within a week's time. Like a day or two before he did that to me, he had called the police on me, um, got me escorted off his property. I had no way to go. No friends, no family would help me because by this time he has turned everybody against me. Um, and needless to say, they didn't give two fucks about what we were going through. Um, domestic violence actually uh, made Courageous Possess the art that rocks with a pop. Prior to meeting him, I was already in a state of um, entrepreneurship. I was already doing awesome crafts. Um, I was talking to God daily, asking him, you know, to lead the way to help me open that door. Um, it's amazing how he opens the door. Um, they say you have a great calling on your life. I've been hearing that my whole life, and I had no idea uh, domestic violence would lead me to my calling. Um so, needless to say, the positive in it all is that I felt my purpose. The negative is that I still hurt every day. I'm still affected by what he's done to me every day. Um, I told my abuser that I would make sure the world know, knew what he did to me. In my case, the system failed me. Um, we'll get into a lot of the different fundamentals of that later on. I have so much that I would like to cover and share with you guys help uh, uh, bring light to this dark subject of domestic violence. Um, so, let me see if I can stay on course here. 
Um, I basically covered everything that I wanted to cover, so I guess I can uh, start um, my closing statements, which I would like to say thank you again um, for watching my video, tuning into my channel. Please like, share, subscribe um, to my channel if necessarily. Share my video with victims. Uh, family members, everybody. Um, everybody needs to be educated. That's the only way we can stop domestic violence. It's never okay to be abused. It's never okay to not help a loved one who's asking for help. It's never okay to look at it as if it's normal. It's not normal. And until people wake up and see that domestic violence is not normal, it will never stop. The children are affected. The children, the children, the children. I cannot stress enough the children are affected. Um, Purpose. Let's talk about the craft piece of my arts and crafts journey. Um, while I was in domestic violence, I did a lot of arts and crafts that actually helped me from committing suicide, helped me from losing my mind, helped me from killing my abuser because I thought about killing him so many times. I'm not the typical uh, victim where you can beat. He could not beat me. I would fight like hell. I have fought him like hell. Most of the time, I would end up fucking him up. Um, but I guess that's the fight or flight mechanism piece um, to domestic violence. My background, um, I don't come from being abused. Um, I was raised, well, I do come from being abused. We'll talk about that later. But I was raised not to let people beat you. I was raised to kick ass. I come from a family of fighters. Um as chaotic as it might sound, um, we whip ass. So I can, I guess it's safe to say he met his match when he met me. Um, and that's why my abuse was so severe. But stay tuned. We'll talk about different uh, stories later on. Again, let's get back to why Courageous Pizzazz has started. I showed you all of my art, um, but again, now you get the story behind why. I create the beautiful art that I create. Um, I want to take the money that I make from arts and crafts and open up me an art studio. I had a uh, art studio before, not too long ago, inside of a flea market. And while I was there, I had open works every day. Basically, I had art for sale, me and my daughter. My daughter is a beautiful painter, so if you ever go to my website and you see uh, paintings on the website, that's my daughter. Uh, domestic violence, both uh, phenomenal painter. So all of our gifts were exposed through domestic violence. I have another daughter uh, that's a cook, so we're all artists. It's amazing how you find your purpose and the reason that you're here on this journey. Who would have a new domestic violence would show me that. Uh, but again, I had an arts and crafts shop located inside of a flea market. Uh, I was supposed to charge kids. I never charged the kids. Majority of the time, the majority of the kids that were in the flea market with loved ones um, would come to my shop. Excuse me. Would come to my shop. Um, they would do arts and crafts. They would tell me their story. What I learned was that um, that was a part of the reason that God allowed me to go through the domestic violence is because I had to understand uh, the effects, to understand how to help the children. Now that I'm out of domestic violence, um, he's giving me the next steps. He wants me to cater to the kids, and I understand why. The kids are the first line of domestic violence. They see it before everybody else sees it. They process it in a way um, that they're silent and they don't even speak up and tell their story. They don't know how to tell their story. Um, God allowed me to see the effects that art has on trauma victims. Art is a big key element in trauma. It helps you deal with uh, a lot of your traumas. It's an escape. It's in highs of free. So instead of me going out here and doing crack cocaine or picking up a bottle and drinking myself to death, I would pick up arts and crafts. And that really, really helped me a lot. If you go to my website, you'll see more about my story and my 
humble beginnings, um, a mission statement of why I do what I do, why I want to help the kids, um, give me more insight into where I'm trying to go. Um, in the near future, I have big, big dreams. I would like to open up a homeless shelter. Um, in order to do so, you have to find a way to get there. So I guess this is one of the pieces to the element of how to get there. Um, I had no idea I was this good with arts and crafts until I went through domestic violence. And when I sit back and look at a lot of my pieces, um, it's no mistake. Like Boosie said, it's no mistake that I'm this good. It's no mistake that I'm this good. You know, um, I can't let the talent go to waste. I can't continue to give my pieces away. I've given away tons of stuff, tons and tons and tons of pieces. Um, so needless to say, I've sown all the seeds that I can sow. Um, so instead of continuously giving out my pieces, the next piece is to give out my information, to spread the word. Um, and I, again, need your help. We have children to save. Um, you can help. I'm not asking for donations. I'm asking for support. Um, purchase pieces. Order pieces. Order customs. Um, most of the money I plan to use um, to open up me another arts and crafts shop. A lot of times kids have nowhere to go. I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. Rec centers, they vaguely exist, if they even exist anymore. When I grew up, we had rec centers. We had the PAL Center. Um, those things don't exist no more. Um, so the kids need a place to go that's free and it's safe. So that's where I come in at. And not only um, can I provide them a place that's free and safe, I can give them something constructive to do with their time. Every child has a piece of creativity in them. It just needs somebody like you and I to unlock it. Help me with that journey. If you go on my website, I have um, a pop-up block that pops up and asks for donations. If you feel as though you don't want to purchase something, donate 50 cents. Donate a dollar to the children. Um, in the past, in the shop, um, I collected donations. I would take the donations and... Um, Buy the kids arts and crafts supplies. They could take it home. Um, for days that they didn't come to the shop, they had something to do. My kids made me very proud. They actually cried when it was time for me to leave. I had a section in the shop where um, I sold merchandise that, were, that was made by the kids. I had uh, extraordinary kids that came through. They were very advanced in art. What I learned about children is you don't have to teach them art. They actually will teach you something because their imagination is um, free. They don't have any limits, any blockages. Um, they just go with the flow. And it's amazing to see what they could come up with. I had children, um, a set of siblings. It was three of them. They drew. Um, they sculpted. Uh, any genre of art they would tap into. And it was just amazing to see these kids go. And they actually made stuff that was sellable. Um I missed that piece, and I would like to get back to it. And, again, that's where you guys coming in with the support um, that would help me be able to help children. Um, <clears throat> we had we would have talks. We would talk about mean stuff, bad stuff, things to do, things not to do. Um, this is only the beginning, and I would like to keep it going. So, again, if you care enough for what you, if you feel compelled to help, help. You know, um, I see us as a people waste our money on the most stupidest things every day. So why not invest your money into something that's worth it? You know, the kids are the future. If we don't shape them and mold them into somebody great, who will? We don't teach them that the world is a screwed up place, but there's hope. Who will? If we don't show them with our actions that things can get better, who will? Um, again, I can't do it alone. I need help. I will do my best to tell my story and, uh, help you guys. If you have questions and things you would like to know about domestic violence, feel free to leave a comment. If I can answer it for you, I can. If you have people that you know that, um, can help me along this journey of sharing the word and telling their story with domestic violence, feel free to 
uh, connect with me. Um, the more the better. Let's see if we can get something going here. I'm putting all my heart, soul, and energy into this. Um, needless to say, this takes a lot of courage for somebody to break their silence. Victims are always silenced and they're afraid to come out. Uh, what's going on in the back of my head? This motherfucker's gonna kill me. He's gonna come and kick my door in. You done fucked up now. The list goes on and on and on. But guess what? I'm gonna put this video out anyway. Um, hashtag, they don't stop until you stop them. Remember, they don't stop until you stop them. Maybe I'll put that on a t-shirt or on a piece of art. I don't really like t-shirts. I like um, glass art, bottle art, sign art. Um, I'm a big words person. So, um, maybe in the future we can put that on something to see if we can get that thing moving. Um, let's find a way to help these children, man. They need all the help and support they can get. Um, it mentally ruined me to see my children go through domestic violence and see that as a mother. Um, there was not too much I could do to help them. Uh, this man had a mind of his own, and you could tell a person to stop a million and one times. They do what they want to do when they want to do it and how they want to do it. Uh, again, let's end domestic violence. Remember to subscribe so I can go live. Hashtag they don't stop until you stop them. Share my video. Spread the word. Until we meet again, be encouraged. Um, I'll do a part two of this segment as well um, to get more in depth. I guess I'll go into my humble beginnings, how I met them, why it started, um, the support that you don't have, why I, um, the system failed me. The list goes on and on and on. So much that we can talk about. So stay tuned to the next video. And again, thank you for tuning in.